Okay, in this video I want us to work through Book 3, Chapter 18 of Aristotle's Politics. And let's begin by remembering that for Aristotle there were six forms of constitution, and these were divided into two kinds. There were correct, correct constitutions and deviant ones. And correct constitutions were those in which the rulers ruled for the public benefit. Deviant constitutions, right, were those in which the rulers ruled for their own private benefit. And now when it comes to ruling, right, you can have two, sorry, you can have one person in power, a few people in power, or many. So this is how we get six constitutions in all. And I just want to briefly go through this table before turning to the text. So first of all, we've got a monarchy here, right? And that's when a single ruler rules for the benefit of all. Um, although the Queen of England is currently somewhat of a, a figurehead, think of the UK here, right? Um, presumably she's ruling uh, for the benefit of all the British. But were she not, were she to rule for her own private benefit, the Constitution would become a tyranny. And we certainly know plenty of examples like this, right? So think of, uh, well, I don't know, just North Korea, there's one. North Korea. Now, also, we've got an aristocracy, and arist aristocracy comes from the Greek word aristos, which means best. So an aristocracy is one in which the best citizens are ruling. Um, and I'm not sure what historical example uh, there would be of this. Maybe we'll think of, you know, Pericles in, in ancient Greece. I'll, put, I'll just put um, Pericles. If you don't know who he is, you should check him out on the Wikipedia. Pericles. Wow. That's terrible. Let's fix this. Think Pericles. The Periclean Age in Athens. Okay, but were those aristocrats right to start ruling not for the benefit of everyone, but for their own private benefit, say to preserve, preserve their wealth, uh, you'd have an oligarchy on your hands. And here, just think, uh, you know, post-Soviet Russia. You have a bunch of wealthy Russian mobsters basically holding the purse strings in Russia to make sure that their interests are um, preserved. Now, the fifth constitution is a polity, and this is when the many people are ruling for the sake of all. And here I think maybe the U.S. of A. might be a good example, at least if we're not being cynical about American politics. And um, when the many start ruling not for the sake of everyone, but just for themselves, uh, you've got a democracy. Uh, and Aristotle, as you can see here, has a pretty low opinion of democracy, but you've got to bear in mind the difference between his definition and our common understanding. Okay, bearing that in mind, let's now turn to the text here, which is right here. Whoops. Great. Um, let's just take this from the top. So Aristotle writes, we say that there are three correct constitutions, and the best of them must of necessity be one managed by the people. Excuse me, by the best of, by the best people. What am I doing? By the best people. And this is the sort of constitution in which there happens to be either one particular person, or a whole family, or a number of people whose virtue is superior to all the rest. Okay, so far so good, right? He's just said that the best constitution has to be one that's managed by the best people. That seems pretty straightforward. And, right, the constitution is one in which there's one particular person, so one particular person here, right, and that's the monarch. This is the monarchy. Or a whole family or a number of people, right, and that's... Um, Sorry, that's the uh, aristocracy. Aristocracy. Okay, uh, so far so good. Um, so these are people who are whose virtue he says are superior to that of all the rest, meaning the people who are ruled, and where the latter, meaning the ruled, are capable of being ruled, and the former of ruling, with a view to the most choice worthy life. Okay, I think so far this is fairly straightforward. Let's keep going. Furthermore, as we showed in our first discussions, he's referring earlier in the book, the virtue of a man must of necessity be identical to that of a citizen of the best city-state. Okay, so why would Aristotle say this? In these correct constitutions, the virtue of the citizen and the virtue of the citizen, excuse me, the virtue of the human are the same. Aristotle argued for this earlier, as I said, um, but his basic point is that the good citizen um, has to be a good ruler has to be capable of ruling well, right? Because any citizen has to be um, partaking in political affairs. And um, everyone agrees, Aristotle, I think we all do too, that good rulers need to be good humans. So to be a good citizen, you have to be able to be a good ruler, and to be a good ruler, you have to be a good human. Um, and most of you claim, right, this in the discussion board, that to be a good ruler, you have to be a good um, human being. Um, 
So being a virtuous citizen for Aristotle then is identical to being a virtuous human, at least in these correct constitutions. Okay, so far so good. Let's let's continue onward here. Aristotle says, hence it is evident that the ways and means by which a man becomes excellent or virtuous are the same as those by which one might establish a city-state ruled by an aristocracy or a king, and that the education and habits that make a man excellent are pretty much the same as those that make him statesmanlike, statesmanlike or kingly. Okay, so what's he saying now? I think he's saying that in order um, to have the most virtuous people ruling, you need to raise people to be virtuous human beings, since, after all, only good human beings can be good rulers. And this, I think, also is, is pretty obvious. But I think it's remarkable how much emphasis Aristotle places on having good humans in positions of political power and how important it is for those virtuous rulers to help fellow citizens be as virtuous as possible. This is a far cry, right, from the discussions that we see in most political debate today. Think of the videos that I showed earlier, the, uh, the debate between Romney and Obama. And all of this from Aristotle is closely tied to his conception of humans as having certain kinds of souls to make it distinctive of them to live in political arrangements like this. Okay, now let's just look at this last little bit. Here this is his transition into what we're going to be reading um, in this module, books, uh, parts of book seven. Um, here Aristotle says, uh, we're going to investigate how the best constitution, he says, naturally arises and how it is established. Um, I'll try to say some more words about this in the podcast, but for now that should suffice for, I think, chapter 18.